Dudes, okay. I got a cool video for you today, if I can ever get it done. I want to cover tomahawks. And I've been trying to get this done since this morning, all right? Excuse me. I'm constantly being interrupted. You know, I am on a ranch, and shit has to get done around here. But it's kind of like the weekend. It's kind of my day off, kind of. Never truly a day off on a ranch. But I've been struggling, so hang with me, man. I'm going to try and get this done for you. So, to start out here, I did a TikTok video about axe style cutting tools and cross cutting saws. If you guys have seen that, you're going to notice that I just like gleamed over tomahawks and told most people, just get yourself an axe. Okay, a nice expensive axe that's hung right and shit. Okay, and that's because a lot of people on TikTok are interested in the short, easy answer. Okay, they're not like people like you that are willing to dive deeper into this. Okay. And people like that, you know what, they're, they're going to go out and they're going to buy themselves an axe and they're going to feel better about it. They're not going to practice using it, probably won't, you know. They're just going to be like, I have it, I'm good, I'm ready, okay. Which is, that could not be further from the truth. We know that, all right. So I'm going to get into hawks because there's a lot more to know about hawks than I mentioned, obviously. And they are definitely worth considering for your shit hit the fan stuff. So we're gonna get straight into it on this one. First, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of background regarding my experience with hawks, okay? My whole life, before the last 11 years, I used axes and hatchets, that's what I used. Read it in old bushcraft books that my dad had when I was a kid, that axe is the best tool. So I believe that shit, stuck with it, that's what I used. About 11 years ago, my wife and I bought a remote piece of property and went homesteading on it. I bought my first hawk to help deal with all the brush on the property. And I didn't clear it all, but I had I cut a lot of trails. And I had to clear it for a home site and places to park vehicles and put a road on it. There was not even a road on it, okay? So I bought myself a cold steel pipe hawk and did a shit ton of work out there with that hawk. Well, from that point forward, we began traveling for more than half of the year. We would take off and leave our property and would go camp all over the U.S. And we're not like most campers. I don't like to be in a campsite. I don't like people near me. We want small rigs that can get us way out in the boonies. And we go way out. And we, when we're out there, we cut all of our own wood and have our own fires and cook on them and do all that shit. And I spent eight years doing that, practicing bushcraft skills, survival skills, and going and living out in the boonies, okay? And during that time, I took a hawk. Matter of fact, uh, I took this hawk, which is a cold steel Norse hawk, okay, for, we bought this about nine years ago. I eventually ended up losing that pipe hawk. That's why it was no longer with us. Uh, and then I, I have bought this cold steel trail hawk about three and a half years ago, and it went to Arkansas with us on that big trip. But um, I've always had hawks with me as opposed to axes because they're lighter, okay? Uh, and I, we're not talking super heavy duty work. I wasn't doing any of that. I just needed to get a fire going. So, ton of experience with hawks, okay? Uh, so my my knowledge will probably be relevant to to this discussion, all right? And I hope it is a discussion. You guys gotta make sure you put comments down there, tell me what you think, and give me some feedback, all right? All right, so let's get into it. Number one, probably, the number one reason to get a hawk is that it is a great poor man's ax, all right? Dudes, I'm not loaded. I'm still buying freaking cold steel hawks. And I'll tell you what, I purchased this one for $27, okay? 27 bucks for a great multi-purpose tool. You're gonna find out how, I just, all the cool things about a hawk, okay? But that's cheap. That's dirt cheap. And if you're trying to get ready and trying to survive on a budget, dude, a hawk is probably going to be the way to go for you, okay? You cannot buy an axe for $27. Well, you might be able to, but if you did, it will be shit, okay? So get yourself a cheap cold steel hawk. Get yourself a bow saw from Home Depot. A couple extra saw blades and some files and... Dude, you're a business. You're ready to go. Throw that shit in your bag, okay? 
All right, so cost is great. Very, very, very affordable. And you really can kind of, you know, the sky's the limit, man, if you want. You can buy hand forged hawks that are expensive. All right, next, lightweight. Okay, these things do not weigh a lot. And that's part of the reason we always took them with us. We had limited amount of space and didn't want to weigh our vehicle down and, you know, be going. I don't like going uphill doing 30, you know what I'm saying? So we always tried to cut weight, you know, and, and to basically do it with minimal equipment. I'm a minimalist in a lot of ways, right? Not now because I'm prepping. It's like when you're prepping, you want to have all the shit you can possibly freaking have. But I've, I still got just, there's only so much money I, I can spend, you know? And you probably have a bigger budget than I have, right? But um, yeah, the weight on these things is great. They're not too big. We're talking a 22-inch hick, American hickory handle on it. The head's probably about a pound and a quarter. And I think overall, this one weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of like 18, no, let's see, I think it's 22 ounces, 22 ounces, okay? So very, very reasonable amount of weight. Also, because they're so lightweight, you can choke up on them very easy to do fine work, okay? You can use them one-handed, no problem. And because of the long handle, you can choke way up. And I have cut down trees that were almost a foot in diameter with tomahawks, okay? Back when we were on our property, when we were first homesteading up there, I would fell trees with chainsaws or my felling ax, and then I'd go through and limb all of them with my hawk because I'm cheap. I didn't want to spend the chain gas and the bar oil, okay? So that's how I am. I'm freaking cheap, man. I'd rather use a freaking tomahawk and do that shit, okay? Um, but they're very capable, all right? They can get a lot of shit done. <laughs> All right, next, I wrote a list for y'all. I might already mention that. Okay, they have a great cross-cutting edge profile, all right? So you guys probably already know this. Let's say this is a log, all right? Let's say it's a log, okay? If you're cutting it this way, you're cross-cutting it, right? Like you're going to cut it and go bring it in, in the house for firewood later, okay? That's cross-cutting, okay? So you have different kind of edge designs. If I'm cutting it this way, I'm splitting it. Right. This is why in axes you see like splitting axes and then there's axes that have a more narrow head. Right. And a very sharp bit to deeply bite in while cross cutting. Well, hawks are designed for cross cutting. OK. You see how narrow that is. They're not designed for splitting. OK. But they're pretty efficient considering the weight. They're actually really good at cross cutting for the weight. OK. All right, let's get into this. This is a good one, all right? One of the great things about a hawk is if you are really concerned about weight, you ditch the handle and you just bring the head with you, okay? Make yourself a leather mask for this thing. It's not hard. There's all kinds of videos online, all right? And drop it in the bottom of your pack. Now you're carrying something that's a pound and a quarter, but when you get wherever you're going, you can make a handle for it. And making a handle form is not hard. You find a branch, okay, that's that's a little smaller on one side and a little bigger on one side than the eye, right? You skin that branch. You take your hawk head and you skin it, okay? You slide this baby all the way up so that you have about this much at the top, okay? Remove the head, baton it to take the branch off. Boom, you got a handle. Now, is that going to last forever? No, okay? But it's going to make this more efficient than using it like this okay, in the meantime. And when you have time, you can make yourself a better handle. All right. So that's one of the cool things about these. It could be a great backup to an axe. Let's say you want to pack an axe in. Right. Well, you could buy yourself a tomahawk head and throw that in the bottom of your pack. Because what's the saying, right? Two is one. One is none. Eventually, you're going to break something. You're going to lose something. Someone's going to steal it from you. Whatever. All right, next, um, let's let's talk about that half half making a little bit more. That's the cheap and dirty, okay? And uh, a lot of this is like kind of dependent on your location. Out here, if if I were out in the shit, you know, I'm gonna try to make myself a half that's gonna last me for a while, especially if I'm where I want to be. If I might have to hit the road again, no, right? I'm just making something to get me through the next few days. All right, but 
If I'm where I want to be, I'm going to try and make a good one. Well, out here, my wood options are limited, right? We're talking juniper and, and different breeds of pine, okay? Uh, so I'm probably going to be stuck. If shit hits the fan and it stays that way, I'm going to be making halves for my damn tomahawk head ever so often for the rest of eternity, okay, until I take the big old dirt nap. So that's something to consider, all right? Okay. Next, you can use this much like a knife. You can make these very, very sharp, guys. Okay, and these cold steel ones will take a great edge. All right, this Norse hawk here, all right, it shaves hair, okay, and so does the trail hawk. I just touched the edges up um, and got them ready for storage this winter or for shit hit the fan use, basically. And they get very, very, very sharp. And, that, you know, when this thing is not on a haft, it's still a usable tool. I think it's kind of funny. Like, I've seen some bushcraft, bushcraft dudes that, like, I respect that know a lot of shit. And they don't, some of them don't know this. Okay. Like, we'll take the coal cracker bushcraft guy. The blonde dude with the beard, you know. Uh, he knows a lot of shit. I've learned stuff on his channel watching him. But he was talking about why he doesn't like using these without the haft. And it's, he's planning on using it this way. That's not how you use them. You take this eye here. It fits right into your palm. Okay. You wrap your fingers around it and you make push cuts. That's how you use a tomahawk head with no haft. You make push cuts like this. Okay. You can clean fish with these. You can clean. I have cleaned fish with these. As a matter of fact, I have done that. Okay. You can clean fish with them. You can clean game with them. I have not done that, but if it'll clean fish, it'll clean game. All right, and and you can use it for all kinds of small things. There's something else magical you can do, and this is some of that efficient in the field hack shit that people don't know about. All right, you can use this as a chisel. All right, you can take it off the haft, make yourself a mallet or baton, and can literally pound this and use it like a chisel. Let's say you are where you're going to be. And the shits hit the fan, stuff's kind of start cooling down, and you're like, I think I'm gonna. You got all your food sorted out, your water, you're doing good, and you got some extra time in the day, and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a cabin so my family can be a little more comfortable, right? This will work great for helping to notch logs and all kinds of different, you know, woodcraft tasks where you're using larger pieces of wood. Kind of cool, right? See, a lot of people won't tell you that shit because they don't freaking know it. All right. Next, um, you can, I have, I will often carry a tomahawk with me while I have my hammer, haversack on and just be out and about. I'll have a handgun on, my haversack, and my tomahawk. But I have also been known to just bring a tomahawk head with me in my haversack. I got one in there. And then I should I should let you guys know this because I'm going to forget it if I don't say it now. For me personally, bush gear, like going out in the bush, I have found that, and I, like I said, I am a minimalist, okay? I feel like it's, it's, a comp, it's, um, it's helped me out. It's helped me focus on the right skills and shit like that, you know, not being super equipped, okay? And that's one of the benefits of, Freaking having a shitty income, man, and being poor, dude, is you got to make it happen with what you got, right? But for me personally, a tomahawk, a large knife, and a small knife have just been a great set of tools. I can do everything with that. You know, the hawk is not going to be as efficient as an axe in a lot of ways. I'm going to get into that real soon here. But still, it's like, you know... It, those three tools for me have have just come through time and time again. And I don't think I've ever actually been out and fi found myself out in the bush like, yeah, actually I have. <laughs> Where I've been like, I wish I had a real axe. I have. I have. There was a time in Arkansas where I was like, I was thinking about it. Like the shit hit the fan out there. And, uh, and what I would have to do, like I'd need to fall a whole bunch of oak, you know, and let them dry up and shit like that and then buck them up. And it's like, man, dude, 
Cutting up oak by hand is work. It's work, you know, so that's something else you're going to want to consider when I get into the next part, you know, is geographical location and what kind of woods are in your area. All right. You can carry these on a belt also. You can make a mask that's got like some belt loops on it. If you were hardcore and you just wanted to have a freaking head on you no matter what all the time, boom, there you go. Okay, so the disadvantages to a hawk, and again, we're comparing a hawk to axes, okay, is that these aren't good for splitting, all right? They're not, all right? What you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up beating the shit out of your haft, right? Because you're going to get this thing down in the wood to here. It's not going to split, and you're going to be pounding away with a baton. Boom, boom, boom which is going to, it's almost like having the effect of an overstrike on your haft. It's going to start to wear away that wood and the beat on the wood, and it's going to reduce the lifespan that you get out of these. Okay. Um, now, in regards to splitting, we need to have a discussion about this really quickly because a lot of people, like a lot of us, live in a colonial mindset, right? We're like, okay, I'm going to go out to the woods, I'm going to build a cabin, and I'm going to live out there and I'm going to chop and split firewood and all that kind of shit. Okay. Guess what the Native Americans did not do? They lived for how long on this continent without splitting wood to survive? They did not split wood. Okay. I think that having a splitting axe or, yeah, like having a splitting axe is, would probably be the last piece of equipment on my list. Okay as far as being a survivalist and having to bug out. Absolute last thing that would go in the truck. It's just not that relevant. I mean, the Native Americans kept themselves warm by breaking dead branches off of the lower parts of trees and collecting deadfall and burning it. They didn't cross cut the deadfall. They just took the whole pieces and put one end in the fire. And when it burnt down, they moved it into the fire more. That's how they did it, literally, guys. So. You know, and, and then think about this, too. It's right. The European settlers show up. The history behind this design is that traders were shipping these over to the American colonies. And these were being sold to the Native Americans and trappers and all that kind of shit. Okay, that's the nature of this design. That's kind of where it comes from. All right. Now. Did the Indians change everything they were doing and start purchasing saws and cross-cutting wood and splitting it to survive? No, they didn't. And you know what that means to me? And you know what it should mean to you? It should mean it's not necessary to be able to split wood to survive out in the wilderness. It's not necessary, all right? There are other ways. So keep that in mind. So Although an axe... Is better at splitting. How necessary is it that you can split wood? If you disagree too, I want to hear about it in the comments. Don't just take what I'm saying and be like, well, I don't agree, but I'm not going to say anything. I want to hear it in the comments because, you know, if you've got a good valid reason for, for why it makes sense. And you know what? I am going to get into, I might as well get into it right now. Okay. Because there is a... There's short-term considerations for shit hit the fan, and there's long-term considerations. Like, the long-term considerations are that you could eventually be splitting wood. You're nice, comfortable. you got a log house built. It's two years after. Everything went to hell in a handbasket. People are starting to trade and meet up and, and make friends and hopefully settle some of the same areas together and peace, do it peacefully, right? Splitting wood is going to matter at that point in time. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it's going to make a comeback, all right? But... To get you through the hard shit, I don't feel it's necessary. All right. The, one of the things about hawks, it's a good chance you are going to be making halves eventually. Okay. Um, out in the shit. All right. They might have done pretty well, but, uh, you know, I've used them completely the way they're intended, which is cross-cutting smaller stuff. All right. And I'm... I'm good with them, you know, I don't have, you know, overstrikes and shit like that, okay, so I have, those are all original halves, right, this one does need to be replaced, though, no, not because of a fault of mine, you guys see how warped it is, 
It's not so warped it's unusable. But, you know, do I want to replace it after shit hits the fan or do I want to replace it before? I want to replace it before because these are freaking cheap, right? And there is no hickory here on top of it, so I might as well get one now. All right? Uh, but at some point, you're probably going to end up replacing your halves. The thing about a really good quality axe and a really good handle, okay, is that if you take care of that thing and you maintain it like you're supposed to, that haft will probably survive longer than you will in shit hit the fan. I'm just being honest, guys. You know, it's like a lot of us are probably going to die in five years of some freaking flu bug that killed people like 200 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom about it, but definitely some of us aren't going to make it, you know, like think about childbirth, man. A, a third of women used to die in childbirth back in the day. It's like, whew, you know, wives are going to be kicking the bucket and shit hit the fan, dude. All right. So, you know, the biggest reason to have an axe over a tomahawk is that axes are better at getting axe shit done. That is the bottom line, okay? Uh, they're bigger. Like, if you think about the length of this half, 22 inches, and you compare this to an axe half the same size, you're looking at an axe that probably has a two pound, two and a quarter pound head on it, okay? Compared to a one and a quarter pound head, dude an axe is going to get way more work done, you know? So that brings us to which one's right for you, a tomahawk or an axe. And you really kind of have to consider your geographical location, right? Like, are you in a forested area? You know, how much do you need an axe? How many trees are you going to be felling and, and, and bucking, right? You know, would a tomahawk work for you instead? To build a good, you know, shelter that's going to have to be repaired and maintained kind of throughout the year, you know. But we'll get you through the hard time, right? Like, you got to decide on your own, man. Like, a serious axe will get serious shit done, you know. And it'll get done a lot faster than a tomahawk. Like, if I was going to fell a 10-inch tree with one of these hawks, you know, I could do it in a tenth the time with my felling axe. If not faster. If not faster, okay. So, way more efficient at axe shit. Axes are, all right. All right. So we're getting down to the end of it here. Um, geographical location. Yeah, I talked about that a little bit, but it's like, do you even need a hawk? Some of you guys that are way out in the desert, you know, and there's like nothing but sagebrush or freaking not even sagebrush, like creosote and shit around, you know, you might not need anything. You know, if there's nothing to cut cut up and burn other than bushes, it's like, do you really need a, a, even a hawk to begin with? So think about that. Don't waste your money. Remember, be efficient with your financial resources. Okay. Um, and then I talked about short-term and long-term considerations. You know, so I think we're done. Oh, thank goodness, man. I think I got through it without any, like, real interruptions. Okay, guys. Uh, to wrap it up, you know... Tomahawks are actually a great tool. Um, axes are a great tool as well. And what I said in my TikTok video stands, if you are not familiar with axe style cutting tools, you either need to learn how to be or you need to forget about buying them all together because you'll only get yourself hurt if you're trying to learn it on the fly without proper instruction. I'm going to reiterate in this book, the U.S. Department of Forestry Axe Handbook is a great place to learn how to use these style tools if you're interested. There's free PDFs online. Doesn't cost anything but time, okay? And you're gonna wanna practice those skills in a safe manner. And remember, using an ax or a tomahawk is like using a chainsaw, okay? You cannot be complacent at all, and you cannot be tired, all right? When you start getting tired or start getting complacent, that's when the accidents are going to happen. And the last thing we want is for you to, to watch all my videos and to get all ready and train yourself and shit. And then you go to the, the woods and you freaking chop a foot off and you die. All right. All right, dudes. That's a wrap. Dude, I would love to get comments from you guys. You first guys that get in here, like some feedback on what you want to see. Like 
what kind of videos do you guys want? You know, what do you want to know about? That's it, dudes. I'll see you in the next video.